Greetings, my fellow hiker, Breeze from Vaucluse Gear, wanting to share with you my experience of hiking the French Alps in summer. When you think of the French Alps, obviously you think of the Mont Blanc, you think of these massive, massive mountains over 10,000 feet high. Um, but there are, you could say, smaller mountains that you can hike, which actually give you an extraordinary view of the massive mountains. And uh, you can do them quite easily. You don't need a whole lot of gear. You don't spend, need to spend a whole lot of money on the gear. You just need, you know, a good, uh, a good trail and uh, several hours to just strive and get all the way to the top and enjoy the view. So I'm going to share with you my experience of hiking in the summer, um, share with you my trail. Um, I'm going to have screenshots and everything below. I've got my notes right here so I don't forget anything. Um, so that way maybe one day you can go come hiking in the Alps and say, look, um, I don't need to be climbing in the snow and having a whole lot of gear to do it. Um, so let's dive in. Um, I've got uh, my, I pretty much just had an Osprey backpack with um, uh, the cool dry frame, which my company makes. I'll explain in a little second what it is and how it works and why it actually helped me with this hike. Uh, but for now, the trail. So I was going to go up the, uh, what they call the Pointe de Bon Plat, which is over 6,000 feet. Um, I parked my car about 3,000 feet below in just north of the town of Belcombe en Bauge. Uh, plenty of parking, which was really helpful. Sometimes you think you got to rush and beat the crowds. Um, not really too many crowds, and it was a it was a Saturday. Beautiful, beautiful weather that you're going to see in the pictures, and uh, just started hiking. So use the all trails. Uh, app to help me plan the route. I learned a few good lessons. Um, this was the biggest mountain I personally have ever hiked. I've never been hiking in the Alps before. Uh, usually hike lower, uh, lower mountains than this. So a few lessons learned. Um, but I also use Strava as well to, to track. Um, I would divide this uh, trail up the uh, the mountain in five different sections and it provided a lot of variety the first part was uh, farm fields it was about one mile moderately um, inclined and you have to think of the alps it's not just uh, it's not just mountains people actually live on the mountain uh, there are farms there's goats um, there's uh, cows there's pigs there's horses um, they're making cheese up here uh, they have actually chocolate factories as well so it's a functioning mountain right here. So it's not just you're in the middle of nowhere, you're in the middle of nowhere and then bam, there's a farm. So section one was a farm field, which is about one mile. Section two, there was a pine forest and you just pretty much walk straight through it. Uh, huge, huge trees. And you just walk that for, um, I believe over just over two miles. And then you start really getting into the rocky incline. Um, pretty epic views already, I could see. Ancy, which is uh, one of the larger towns around here, and the Lac de Ancy, which is the lake. Um, there was one um, section of the hike that was literally a drop off um, several hundred feet, and that's why they had a rail. So not for the faint of heart. We had to go up that. The incline, there was half a mile of just sharp, sharp climbing. And then section four, then you start seeing that you're on top of a mountain. You start seeing some really, really great views. Um, pretty much two miles, just cl moderately climbing up, climbing up, climbing up. And, and you start seeing some incredible views of the different uh, mountains. You can see the Mont Blanc. Unbelievable view, panoramic view. So definitely worthwhile to do this hike. And then all the way to the peak, there's again another sharp, sharp incline and another fantastic view. So overall, it was impressive just because you could do it pretty much with basic gear um, and you could get some fantastic views, as I've said. Um, however, I did learn a few lessons, um, personal lessons. You probably already know this. Uh, don't just trust what the app tells you. I actually found that All Trails was telling me to go places that actually I shouldn't be going, um, but what I did like about all trails is you give them the feedback and they pretty much fix it almost immediately. Um, I think the next day they changed the, um, the feedback, um, the trail off of my feedback. So that was really good. Um, and also I just learned that I just got to double check uh, my trail, even though 
I wasn't expecting much. I, I knew it was going to be a sharp incline, but it's always good to just make sure that you know what your trail is, what you're going to need, and um, pack everything that you need. So that was um, that was a lesson learned. And one of the things that I found is that, well, I hiked two hours more than I anticipated. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to put this down. And um, because of that, you know, I had water for about five hours. So I thought I was going to go up and down and that's it. And unfortunately, I was up there for two hour, two more hours. So seven hours in total. Um, I got pretty tired uh, just because I thought I was going to find the trail that all trails was telling me to, to use. I couldn't find it. And then I had to backtrack and somehow and somewhere two hours were wasted just being lost technically on the mountain. So I used my cool dry frame, which actually helped tremendously on this hike because what it does is obviously when you sweat, your body's trying to cool down uh, and moderate the body temperature. And obviously if you're sweating, uh, your body temperature is up, uh, you're sweating more, you need to drink more liquids. Uh, thankfully, what this frame does is helps moderate the body temperature and keep you cooler and let that sweat evaporate. So thankfully, I was to extend the amount of water that I had for the seven hours. Um, if I r had ran out of water after the five hours and I had to do hiking for two hours without water, um, I would have probably been that would not have been a pleasant experience. I don't know what would have happened, but already, you know, hiking with seven hours uh, with only water for five hours, that was already stretching it. But thankfully, I had my cool dry frame, which was really, really, really helpful. Um, it just attaches on any backpack that you have, um, whether it's a, I have a 22, if you've got a 30, a 40L, 55L, or even a 15L, it attaches and what it does, it allows you to just have a little bit more breathing um, on your back. And so that was really helpful. The weather uh, was sunny. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Weather was, it wasn't extraordinarily hot, but when you're in the sun for pretty much seven hours, um, there was a bit of cloudy at the end, but for the most part, if you're in the sun for five, six, seven hours, um, even with a lower temperature, um, it, you know, you're going to start sweating. So it was a beautiful day, a beautiful hike, beautiful views. I'm thankful that I had my cool dry frame. Uh, thankful as well to have had all trails and Strava, um, water, and obviously my beautiful wife who was there the entire way and helped us, you know, just plow through. So hopefully this has inspired you to come to the French Alps and enjoy the views. Thank you very much. See you on the trails. Bye.